Repair of my Panasonic DVD video recorder. This is a DMR EX79 EB. This one, it just goes round, please, 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 in slightly dim lights. Okay, let's have a look inside. Uh, that one looks okay. The one behind it on the right looks slightly um, as if it's the cap is raised, possibly dried out. Going across onto the main board, yuck, some yellow gooey stuff leaking out of one, and another one which is bowed on the right hand side. This is the one on the main power board. You can see it's very much bowed up. Not vented, but bowed. A good candidate. And these are the ones on the main board, well bowed with some gunk coming out of the top left hand one. Okay, so let's get it out and see what's going on. I sped this up a little bit because it's a bit boring otherwise. This is the first time I've ever assembled one of these, so I don't always get it right first time. This seems to be a pretty standard unit on Panasonic DVD recorders. Mains filter capacitor, uh, which is pretty worth shorting out in case it's got 250 volts in it. And a selection of electrolytics. That one looks a bit suspect. The other ones look okay. Power supply issues are common on these devices, so uh, it's probably worth fixing that first. Okay, let's desolder it. I have a very small soldering iron uh, for small work. I've got a number of other ones, but this is one I like using because you tend not to destroy the circuit board as you go. Let's try and get this electrolytic out. There are a number of techniques for removing components and solders into boards, so this is a simple one. Just heat it up and then use a, a vacuum solder remover to remove the molten solder. And then when you've got hardly any left, use a little bit of uh, solder braid to absorb the uh, solder that's left. It's a bit fiddly and with the soldering iron of such uh, low size, low capacity, um, it takes a little bit of heat to get it going. There we go, it's starting to come down. The leads are bent over from where it was uh, inserted originally, so you need to desolder and give it a little bit of physical force to pull it out. Both sides. Oh, still that. A little bit more. And it's out. Okay, so this is the one I got out. Uh, I have an ESR meter. You don't actually need one of these. Visually, you can see that the capacitor is a little bit wrong. This is measuring 8 microfarads and it should be 100, so something's definitely wrong here. They're easy to buy, 50p on eBay. You normally have to buy them in pairs, so a pound. Um, and I think I paid 68p postage. Let's try this new one. Hundred and one microfarads, pretty close to what it should be. Certainly different from the eight we had before. 
make sure the capacity you get is rated uh, in voltage terms comparable to the one you're replacing, otherwise you'll get a big bang and some magic smoke. Okay, resolving is pretty straightforward. Reverse operations, take it out. Fan cable clips into the clip on the power board that connects off to the main board. Just about see our symptoms are exactly the same as it was before so we've achieved nothing even though we've replaced a capacitor which we knew was definitely wrong so and look at some other capacitors now to get the other capacitors you have to get the main board out or at least to desolder them properly which means disassembling the entire unit. So let's have a go at that. Hard drive first. Now the uh, processor board in the middle. Takes a bit of wiggling to get it out of the metal bridge. A little bit of twisting, turning, and you're out. Disconnect the power board. Front panel squeezes off, it's just held in by plastic clips. working out the order of disassembling pieces here. D drive. And then a small metal bridge face thing in the front. And in this case I've just removed the board. Some stands. Switch the corners. Screws holding the connections into the back. They all have to come out. Nope, still doesn't come out. That one. Nope. Missed a couple of small ones. That one. And then that one. doesn't want to come out, but it's, if you give it a little bit of a push, it gets stuck by the, uh, the DVB tuner. It's slightly wedged in, so a little bit of wrangling. A bit more wrangling. Can't find any screws, it's just a case of a bit of brutal force now. Nope. See, I haven't done this one before, and there it goes. Okay, so looking at the main board, 
uh, lots of catastrophes. There's the ones we noticed that have definitely vented. Uh, nothing much on the bottom that allows us to access the capacitors. C1737. Obviously on different models the capacitors layout and number in the scheme is going to be different but the use of substandard electrolytics by Panasonic seems to be pretty universal. This is a not a common problem. This one should be 680 and it's measuring pretty much random numbers. Again, replacement costs virtually nothing. Not that one. Six twenty-three. Well, not far off. Okay, let's get the other one out. Then make sure they're all around. This is marked on the board. Turn the ends off. Good. Whilst the other ones look slightly blown, but uh, I don't want to replace everything, so let's put it back together again. Just the reverse process. Remember where all the screws went, it helps. There are a couple of steps I have to repeat, because I don't get them in quite the right order, but it's heading in the right direction. Wash the processor board down so the connector matches nicely. DVD drive. as a board I should say. Hot disk. Should put those screws back. Gently squeeze it on. Back into the clips on one connection at the front. Looking good. Power on, but please wait. Aha, something different. Okay, so here it is. 
powered on. Please wait. No splee brighter than it was before. Really not much to be done now apart from wait to see what happens, if anything. I'm not going to fix anything else, this is, this is it. And there we go, initialization sequence finished. It's now flashing, but it doesn't uh, know what the current time is. We're in action. Test the DVD drive for opening. So just tidy up, put the case on and we're done. Okay, good luck. If yours behaves in a similar way, then try the same fix. The capacitors were pretty obvious. They're the ones which were bowed or vented. Uh, you don't need a tester to identify them, so it should be straightforward. Open it up, look for the values, order replacements, and then solder them in.